The Latino List, an ongoing exploration of who we are, where we come from, and what it means to be a Latino in the United States today. In Puerto Rico, we have so many complicated race dimensions. And so there's always questions about the color of the skin of children. First question that the old members of the family ask, ¿Cómo salió? How did, how did it come out? Not is it a boy or girl, what color of the skin? Pero bueno, pero malo, good hair, bad hair. My mother would complain about my full lips, my bembe, because I have a pretty light skin color, but this might be a betrayal of some other things in our blood. I grew up very Catholic. I went to Catholic school. We lived in New York in the Bronx. I taught catechism in high school. I thought I'd be a priest. And then I hit puberty and figured out I was gay and thought I'd take a different tack. Understanding that I was gay was something I knew since I was about nine years old. But I was always concerned about my family. They're believing Christians. And it took them a while to understand it. When I was a little boy, there was a fashion show to look at the new uniforms at the Catholic school. Put your hands on your waist, pivot, turn. I remember coming home and doing that before my parents. My father, furious. Los hombres no se ponen la mano en la cintura. The men don't put their hands on their waist. So ever since then, you know, shoulders back, arms down. My father was in a hospital. He was terminally sick with lung cancer. And I have my hands on my waist, and I have my head down. And he says to me, Todavía tienes las manos en la cintura. And so I dropped them right away, shoulders back. And he said to me, Nunca paré de pensar que eres un gran hombre. I never stopped thinking of you as a great man. And we hugged and kissed and cried. And we settled our peace. I love the Yankees. Baseball has always been associated with my dad. My dad died when I was so young that there's only a treasure few memories that I have about him. But the most important was sitting next to him on the couch while we watched a baseball game. For me, the housing project is a community. We weren't the projects. We were a family. We grew into an extended group of people who loved each other and have spent the rest of our lives in touch with each other. Nothing in life comes easy. Most people don't achieve things naturally, whatever that means. You're a natural writer. You're a natural actor. You're a natural lawyer. There's no such thing. All of these things have to be learned. I never learned how to dance satsa when I was younger. I become a judge and I get invited to all of these Hispanic dress up functions. And you know that the men love to dance and they all would be coming up to me and asking me to dance. Yo plantada ahí, no pudiendo decir que sí. And I felt horrible. I read a book about dancing. The book didn't help much. You really have to practice dancing. This guy came to my home and for six months, he worked with me. And then at an office Christmas party, we put on music and I danced down the hallways of the Second Circuit Courthouse. The whole courthouse was in a state of shock. It is impossible to tell people the feeling I have every time I go out into the courtroom. I walk out behind Justice Breyer and as he's moving to his chair away from blocking my vision, I see the expanse of the courtroom. And it's the most chilling moment anyone could ever have. I hope I have that feeling for the rest of my life. My mom was like the warrior woman. She would go and fight for the family, fight for my father, because no, that can't happen. You know, that's not allowed. My godmother, uh, his daughter, was getting a special test to go on to Hunter. Hunter is a school for intelligent young people, right? And she told my mom, she says, you know, my daughter's getting this test. Is your daughter getting the test? And my mom was like, uh-uh. 
you know, let me go to school and find out why she's not getting the test. So my mother goes. I was her translator. She says, tell the principal that I want to know why you're not getting the test. And he says, tell your mom that the kids in this school, right, the school I'm in, are not bright enough. So they're not getting the test because they'll all fail. So my mom looks at him and she says, look, you son of a bitch. My daughter is intelligent. And I insist that you give her this test. I insist that you give the whole school the test. And I was like, Ma, you speak English? I didn't know that my mom spoke English. That was the first time I understood that everything that we were saying in the house, my mom understood. The mandate my parents gave me was demand your place in the world. And everything I've done has been to assure my place in the world, demand my place in the world, because I know that in doing that, my children will have it better. And I needed to make sure that my children understood that we are perfect, that we came to the world perfect, that our color is perfect, that our hair is perfect, that our nose is perfect, and we don't have to compare ourselves to anyone. When I was growing up, a brother who was always with my brother became addicted. He was in the street, raggedy one day and so on, and I walked by thinking I was, you know, beyond cute, beyond fabulous, right? And he says, you know, hey, sis, and I ignored him. And he went and told my mother, and she says, Jimmy talked to you and you didn't respond? Why didn't you respond? You know, teenager thinking I was all that, you know, so I was like, oh, because he's all dirty and so on and so on. That was the first time my mother smacked me in the face and my mother said, that could be you. That could be your brother, that could be your sister, that could be me. Don't you ever, don't you ever not recognize yourself in somebody else. That's being spiritual. My mama taught me. <laughs> That's being spiritual. My mama taught me. <laughs>